Michael Jordan is not only the best basketball player, but he's the most exciting basketball player to ever play. Tatum flies away, pumps it in, 51 for Jason Tatum. The Big Three NBA podcast is powered by Prize Picks, the exclusive daily fantasy partner of the CLNS Media Network. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Big Three NBA podcast. Right before we started recording, Gary and Sherrod started some beef. Have you two settled? I'm good. <laughs> I'm like Usher. I'm good. Not Usher, really? Usher? Okay. I'm not good, good, but I'm good. Your references. Okay. Gary, how are you feeling? I'm, it's 2024. I'm trying to be better, like Sherrod <laughs> said. Yo, until next year, he's never letting that up. No. Nope, oh, trying to be better. I hate this dude. 2024. Uh, no. Gotta bring some positivity in his life, and what does he do? <laughs> you know me. Don't worry, you two will agree on something throughout this podcast episode. I am sure of it. Let's get into the Celtics. They lose 104-91 to the Bucks. Milwaukee snapping a four-game losing skid for themselves. The Celtics, no Horford, no Porzingis. Tatum and Brown combined for seven turnovers. What is the level of concern for this loss? The series is now tied 2-2 for the season for those two teams. Of course, two of the better teams in the East. So what do you make of that loss? None. <laughs> Nothing. I have no concern about that yeah. loss. Because uh, even though Milwaukee, obviously, you know, they, they did enough and played much better than they normally do, that team is very prob- problematic. Uh, I, I still see them as having some problems. And remember, you know, Porzingis and Al Horford, it's not like that was just some, some you know, end of the bench cast that they didn't play. Uh, every game at this point, just it just doesn't have the, the significance for the Celtics as it does their opponents. I mean, Milwaukee needed that game so much more than Boston did. And I just remember after the horn sounded and there's, the camera is panning on, on Doc Rivers, and he did not look like a guy that was happy. He looked like a guy that was more relieved that they won than anything else. And I think that's kind of where they are right now because there are some concerns about this Milwaukee team internally about what they can do in the playoffs because you look at where Doc took this team over and you look at where they were in terms of rankings and status at both ends of the floor. And they've been their record has been mediocre and their play offensively and defensively has been mediocre. Uh, and, and so that is not exactly the way you want to go into the playoffs because if you're talking about the top four seeds in the East, who's the one team that most teams that are on the bottom side of that want to play? It's Milwaukee because they look extremely vulnerable. Yeah, I wasn't as concerned. I did not like the way they started allowing 37 points in the first, like just kind of getting smacked. But Milwaukee scored 37 points in the first quarter and I think scored uh, 67 points in the final three. So the defense stepped up. Um, and I think the cell, I mean, they just missed a lot of shots. Jalen Brown was just not good offensively. Derek White just didn't look as good either. And I'm not saying, oh, they're going to have a bad play. Nothing like that. It was just a game. They weren't as engaged. But I, I did think it was good for them to, to rally and not lose by 50. Um, and then with, what, five, six minutes left, he pulled the starters and was like, okay, you got us. And, you know, it, it was just a game that, I think it was very vanilla, their offense. They didn't show them anything. They didn't play their top two bigs. Um, so we'll see if this even – I don't think this has much significance for the future in terms of, like, the matchups. Um, but the Celtics are going to have to, if they're, you know, face Milwaukee, probably going to have to win a game in Milwaukee. I know they have home court advantage, but you got to think the Bucks will be good enough to win a game at the Garden. And so the Celtics are probably going to have to win a game in Milwaukee if those two face in the playoffs because – I would think the Bucs are not going to lose all four games or, or whatever in in, in Boston. Uh, they're, they're good enough to win on the road. Let's see if Giannis is healthy. We'll see about that. So I wasn't concerned or, oh, I'm worried or, oh, this is a bad sign or anything. You know, it, it's a it's a late season game that meant nothing. And I was I thought it was good they came back and rallied some and made it a competitive game as opposed to just getting wasted um, but none of the, nobody, I mean, Tatum was a pretty decent, but nobody Hauser's in a big slump, um, white and Brown. I mean, Jalen missed a ton of layups and just tried to take a lot of shots early and none of them were going in. He just wasn't very good. So you just shake it off and, and try to 
three games left. You got the Knicks coming in. They're playing for something, so it's another competitive game. But I think they'll they'll try to finish strong now, uh, and then probably that Sunday afternoon game against Washington, play basically the main Celtics, uh, the main Red Claws slash Celtics. We'll see if they win their championship because they're in the championship now. Exactly. Um, coming off a title, we'll see. They need one more win, and probably that that game against the Wizards. You mentioned Giannis. I didn't mention, should have mentioned this off the top, though, but he left that game, was helped off with a calf injury. It's reported that it was um, he avoided Achilles damage, which is obviously good, but there's also no timetable for his return. So looking ahead to the playoffs, what do you, I mean, for Milwaukee, obviously that's a high level of concern, but what do you think this could possibly mean for Boston? Hey, Gary. I, I mean, I, calf strains are no joke. Mm-hmm. Marcus Smart, I think, missed six weeks with a calf strain a couple years ago. Damon Lee was like, well, it'll be like a week or two. Like, this is the calf. Like, that's the central pushing off muscle, especially with Giannis, who plays with such force. So, mm-hmm. and as much as, yeah, I'm glad it's not an Achilles, you know, and you everybody after the after the game was an expert on Achilles injuries. And, <laughs> well, you know, when I tore my Achilles when I was playing In soccer, high school. <laughs> soccer, you know, this is how it looked. You know, hey, like, stop it when you see an injury and then you, you got to go back to your damn athletic days playing right. with the Junior Pee Wees, Blue Jays, and Little League Baseball. And that's how it looked when you did stop that, folks. Let the, let the injury did not tear his Achilles. Everybody else last night was a damn Achilles expert. Stop it. You don't, you did not. I know you tore your Achilles. It was painful. <laughs> you ain't Giannis. You so, also seven. <laughs> so stop it with the like, well, this is how it looked when I did it. You know, like, anyway. Yeah. So cast strains are still serious. And so I just, I can't see him being back. Oh, he'll be back in a week. Really? You got to, first of all, not, you got to lay off the injury for a while, let the calf heal. Then you got to start pushing off, like doing, pushing off a a step, you know, basically stepping up things. You got to work the muscle back. Then you've got to jog. Then you've got to run. That's a process. This is not an injury he could just shake off. Like this is something serious because you don't want to tear the calf muscle. If you guys remember, Carl Anthony Towns missed like six weeks not this season, but last season with a calf strain. Like, this is a serious injury. I'm not saying he's going to miss six weeks, but the whole premise of like, oh, he'll be back in a week and a half. No, no, no. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, there's, if you're in Milwaukee, um, you ain't feeling good this morning. I don't care what the doctors tell you. I don't care what Giannis tells you. The way his game is built this is probably the worst case injury he could have. His game is built so much on his ability to just simply out athletic you with his athleticism and his power, uh, you know, just playing above the rim and getting to the rim. And this is one of those injuries that will basically, it'll put a, put the brakes on that real quick. You see, you see a lot of guys are able to deal with this injury who are slow uh, athletes who aren't exactly the most mobile players, they can kind of navigate their way through this. But I, we, we, sh- we will not see Giannis before the playoffs. And even then, he, he may miss a game or two. Uh, this typically, even if it's like a strain, you're probably looking at a couple weeks just to be on the safe side uh, that you won't see him out there. And again, that's not Dr. Blakely. That's just knowing folks who've had this injury, who've played in the league, who are actual pro athletes. So... I don't know where Gary was getting his numbers from, but that's where I get mine from. Just looking at guys who played the game. Uh, I mean, I get mine from Doctor Blakely. <laughs> that dude, man, he's something else. He's something he's else. He's board certified. Exactly. Board, yeah, you, board. You, you, listen you, to Gary. You, you blue Cross Blue Shield. Story. You got what your what, your PPO? Oh, oh my gosh! I got your PPO. <laughs> Punk mother. <Blakely>. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, anyway, it's going to be a couple of weeks before we see Giannis at the earliest. We'll see I him agree. at the beginning of the playoffs. And I don't think I my gut tells me, depending on who they're playing, we yeah, may I not think he misses the, the first round. I think mm-hmm. he misses the B. This is your franchise. There may not be a player. round after the first round if you miss yeah, it, Gary. They play the right team. But this is your franchise player because 
this injury is so it's like a hamstring is so susceptible to restraining you mm -hmm. can't just come back with a half calf a, a 50 percent calf a 75 percent calf and be like oh i'm gonna run the floor at full speed and i'm gonna dunk on two dudes like Giannis plays like you said Shirai, with such force like physicality his calves are that's critical anything with his legs and so I just can't see the Milwaukee medical team being like, hey, Giannis, okay, you about 70, 70 73%. Get out there and play. You good. No. Because he could tear that muscle, then it's real problems. So I think it's going to be a couple of weeks. I think he's going to likely miss that first round series, unless it's a, you know, we'll see the what grade the strain is or whatever, but the Bucks are going to be careful here. Yeah, because remember Marcus Smart had like a grade one calf strain and he was out for I think a couple weeks. I think yeah. one in that you just you can't be too careful with that injury because to your point, Gary, uh, you don't even have to go hard for that thing to flare up again. No. And that to me, that's what makes this such a scary, scary injury uh for Milwaukee Bucks and Giannis. He could just simply be, you know, just making a pretty average play out there if they come if he comes back too soon. And that average play could be the play that puts him out for an extended period of time. You 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 cannot put him out there too soon. You cannot do that. It, that it's one of those decisions that will have the repercussions of doing that will absolutely devastate your franchise for years, possibly decades to come. So no, it doesn't make sense to, to do that. And if we're being honest and we're keeping it 100, it's not like the Bucs are playing the kind of basketball that makes you think that they can win a championship this year. I mean, this it may if if this injury proves to be a little bit more serious than they're letting on at first, it may be a blessing in disguise that they just put a, you know, just shut this season down as a team and just look ahead to next year where Doc, as we all know, Doc going to clean house. Uh, he, he already told folks, gave you a heads up, get your LinkedIn update it, get your resume cleared up because you won't be looking for another job next year when he's blaming everyone but himself for the problems they got. He is going to bring in some new folks. Uh, and Giannis not being able to be in the playoffs, it's, it, at that point, it becomes a matter of, yep, maybe we should shut it down this year since we're our best player ain't going, going to be out there. Um, my com but, my uh, comparison, Sherrod, Marcus Smart missed 19 games with his calf strain. Right, and it was a grade one. It was, yeah, and that, missed, that's like the mild, yeah. He missed like five weeks. So he came, he was hurt January 30th, 21. He made his return December, sorry, March 11th, 21. He missed 19 games with a calf strain. So, right. you know, and I'm not saying, you know, Mark is a more physical guy, more susceptible to injuries, but this shows you the seriousness of a calf injury. This is the, the Bucks got off lighter because he didn't tear his Achilles, but this still is a significant injury. And the fact that they drew a correlation between the injury and Achilles tells you this was something that they were very concerned about from the jump. And that means it was, it's probably closer to being an Achilles than being just a bump of a normal bump and bruise. And that, I think you're right, Gary. I mean, I, I think he's probably looking, he's probably going to miss that first round. The more you, the more I think about it, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that's kind of almost definite at this point, but wish him the best with the recovery because I know even with the players themselves, they would still rather see yeah. the best of the Bucs than just get a, not cheat win, but get a, a win that feels as though it wasn't as hard fought as they could have. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than 3 million members. It is the easiest and most exciting way to get on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. You just pick more or less on two or more player stats and watch the winnings roll in. Prize picks is so easy to play. I can make my Celtic picks and make my entry in less than 60 seconds. Quick withdrawals and easy gameplay and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what makes Prize Picks the number one fantasy sports app. Celtics and NBA fans, you can get in on prize picks in 30 states across the country, including California, Texas, and Georgia. On prize picks this week, I'm selecting Jason Tatum to dish out more than five assists and his teammate Jalen Brown to have more than 22 and a half points. Download the app today and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Prize picks. My favorite segment <laughs> that has now become a thing. We still need the dating app to sponsor it. But we're checking in on an ex today. 
Can you guess which one, Gary? It's one of Gary's favorite players. <laughs> in the whole wild world. In the whole flat world. <laughs> wow. Our, well our friend, done, Kwani. Our friend I Kyrie Irving. honestly can't turn it off. Yeah, <laughs> Dallas Mavericks guard Kyrie Irving, recently named Western Conference Player of the Week. Dallas goes 3-1 and one during that week. They also now have clinched themselves a, a, a playoff spot. Irving, averaging 31 point points, 5.3 rebounds, 3 assists, and 1.5 steals per game. He also shot 52.4% from the floor and 40% from three. What are your thoughts on Kyrie and the fact that the Dallas Mavericks are now playoff bound? <laughs> They're finally looking like a team that they were built to be. I mean, this is what when they brought together such a dynamic score like Kyrie and such a difference maker like Luka, when you put them together, this is what's supposed to happen. You're supposed to be one of the better teams. And so it's it's good to see Kyrie is playing like Kyrie uh, and leaving all conversations about him to basketball. We're not talking about, you know, some, you know, we're not talking flat world. We're not talking about, you know, movies and that he's liking. And we're not talking about any of that kind of stuff. We're talking about him breaking ankles, Dallas winning games, positioning himself for the playoffs. This is what he really, I think, has to make the rest of his career about is just make it about basketball. That doesn't mean you don't co comment or chime in on things outside of that, but those things can't be what defines your impact on the game. Uh, because yeah. if, if we're talking about that stuff, that probably means you ain't balling out. And if you ain't balling out, then what the hell, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? So it's good to see Kyrie getting back to doing Kyrie like things, which is just absolutely being, you know, one of the best players in the game. Yeah, I think it's finally, worked him and and Luca have created a symmetry there it took him a while and I don't think I think both of them wanted to work and I think in all honesty with Kyrie he just turned 32 which means his clock is starting to tick on his career in terms of like he doesn't have 10 years left and I think he wants to preserve and play as long as he can and you can't play in this league if you're a problem like the the league gets rid of its problems. The league will push aside its problems. If you are a problem, you got to eliminate those problems in order to remain in the league. If the league finds you a problem, it will find a way to get rid of you. And I think Kyrie was a real problem in Brooklyn. He got out of Brooklyn. He's kept his beliefs. And I'm not saying don't keep your beliefs to yourself and shut up and all that, shut up and dribble. What I'm saying is, you could be open about your beliefs, but still ball. You're a ball player. People pay to see you ball, not take games off. You say you love the game, then love the game, and the game will love you back. And I just think with Kyrie, he finally seems like he's loving the game again. The game's loving him back. He's a fun player to what we all know. The dude's great, crazy talented. Like, nobody can turn around and say he's not a top 75 player. You can't. You only say it because of his problem. He's, there's, we haven't seen a player like him maybe since Isaiah Thomas, the original Isaiah Thomas, like ball handling, using either hand, just his artistry with the ball, his ability to shoot, his ability to score on big, like all that stuff. I mean, even in time in Boston, I would watch him work out before games and stuff he worked on, just his left, shooting that left off the glass. I mean, repetitive things that was just like, man, what is like an a, a artist at work? Now, his personal issues and maybe his lack of desire to play and his some of the things got in the way of that, and he made some poor decisions, really poor decisions. But he's still a young man. He put that in his past. He didn't hurt anybody in terms of physically hurt anybody. He made some bad decisions, and he offended some people that didn't need. he did not need to offend. And hopefully he's apologetic and he's moved on. And I think the, the fun part is seeing him hoop. That's what we want to see. That's what we want to see. Now, if you want to speak out, you can speak out on your own time, speak out in the off season. You can d dedicate, because we all know he's given his money to the WNBA. He's given his money to um, pe victims of police violence. You know, pe He's to donate to funerals. He's donated to a lot of things he doesn't talk, talk about. He's a very you know, philanthropic person, right? He, he gives away a lot. He does a lot for the community. I'm not saying he's a saint. He's not. But I think he's done some things. And I said, it just sounds like he said, you know what? I need to keep my job. I love the game. And I want to give back. And every, we ain't talking about this BS anymore that, you know, him 
taking two weeks off and being on Zoom call. We're not talking about that anymore. We're talking about hooping. We're talking about him and the Mavericks taking him to the finals. That's what we're talking about. And I think we all enjoy that. Absolutely. That was a very wholesome checking in on the X. Well done. We have one more, though, Kwani. Who's coming back to Boston on Friday? Wait, who who did play Friday? Tell it, Gary. Wait, I want to guess. I want to go tell me whatever. I'm wasting people's time. Who? I don't even know who they're playing. Oh, yeah, duh. Grant Williams. <laughs> Thanks, Kwani. I didn't know who they're yeah. playing. I, I'm sorry. Goodness, I'm not perfect. I'm shocking. Yes, the Charlotte I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. A shocking. Shocking. <laughs> yes, Grant Williams. We've talked about him a lot. We did. First game video. back in Boston. Is he getting a tribute? We didn't talk about the kind of awkward situation when the Blazers came in where they did kind of a the Robert, yeah. Well, they combined Banton, Brogdon, and Robert Williams in the same. They didn't. Um apparently Robert Williams did not want a video. Did they get so, a pick? I didn't know they got to like I guess he said he didn't want a video. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. so they did kind of a picture and then they put him on the screen with Brogdon and Banton and Robert got a nice round of applause. And I think Brogdon's still mad about the trade. He was there. Oh, he's still salty. Yeah. yeah. So you could tell he was not, you know, was it was just like, awkward. Like, it's one of your, it was one of your more awkward comebacks because, mm-hmm. you know, they, I think they really wanted to honor Robert and do the community thing, showing with the kids and Duncan and all that. Mm-hmm. And I guess apparently he said, he did not want a tribute video. And so it was like, let's put him on the screen and then mention Brogdon and Ban- Delano Banton too, which was kind of just squished into. It I guess wasn't... it does make it awkward if you give Rob a video and the other, well, obviously the other two wouldn't necessarily get one. No, you so wouldn't get half of video. Where were you, you going to get but... footage for, for Benton? No, that video exactly. would have been what, like six seconds? Zero images found. <laughs> it would have been a that. gallery. Yeah. They so had I, a bunch of still why... images. They would have a bunch of still images and had to make a gallery. I wonder if that's why, though, that maybe Robert, Robert, call him Robert, I, Rob decided. I don't know. I, I don't I know. You know what, though? I'm sure him and Brockton have talked. Yeah, I'm imagine. sure that Robert wasn't happy with the trade as much as he's, you know, in Portland now and he seems okay. Yeah. I'm sure he wasn't thrilled to just get moved moved away like that. Yeah. So. Maybe he was just, you know, but there's a reason they all came to Boston. They didn't have to come to Boston. He's not playing. That's a good point. That's a good Neither is yeah. Malcolm. Malcolm is not playing the rest of the season. Robert Williams is not playing the rest of the season. So why y'all come? Because. You know, and if anything, you know, y'all could have stayed in the lot, watched the game from the locker room. So the alternative, the alternative was to stay in Portland. Yeah, no, they could have made the trip, Sherrod, but they also could have watched the game from the locker room. They and not could have. Out. But that would have that would have brought more attention to them than they would want because then yeah, it's just like why aren't you out with your team? Brogdon yeah, is still so, salty man. because I, I and I can understand why you went from being a guy that wins six man of the year on a team that's a title contender. You get an injury in the playoffs, aren't yourself, and so what happens? They trade you to one of the worst teams in the NBA. And if you're Rob Williams, you know you're not playing now. I think if Robert was yeah. healthy enough to play, he would have been cool with a tribute video. Because he would have been playing, but th- th- one of the many reasons why they were willing to trade him is exactly for what he is doing now, which is nothing because of injuries. <laughs> the only dude who was as happy, happy Georgia to be in the building was Ben because he's Benton, just like, yeah. Y'all gave me away for like, pe- y'all didn't even give me away for peanuts. Y'all gave me away for peanut shells. There wasn't even no peanuts in that <laughs> damn boy. So he, he come back, he dropping 16, 17, 18 <laughs> points a game on a bad team, and that's great. I'm happy for him. But the other two, I understand why they didn't want and they were different about it because they didn't leave on their own accord. They didn't go to a better situation and they not playing. So if you're Rob, it's like, y'all giving me this trivia video and I, I and it's a reminder of why they traded you. You're going to see all them dunks. And that's like, yeah, that's what I used to do. Damn, I can't even do that right now. Can't even do it now. And Malcolm, again, I love his professionalism, but He's still human. When you cut me loose, send me to the worst. It's, it's like Gary. It's like growing up in Beverly Hills, and they send you to the worst section of, of L.A. 
and you all, and the only reason they send you there is just because you may have, you know, you, you did one thing that wasn't what they liked you to do. So they just send you from Beverly Hills to the worst section of LA. And then, and then when, they, and then when you're going back to that neighborhood and they're like, Hey, how you doing? You supposed to be happy. You supposed to be like, we good. No, nah, we ain't good. <laughs> I might say hi to you, but we ain't good. And you know that that's why Malcolm, I, res- I have much respect for Malcolm because he has not gone, he hasn't gone nuclear the way I think it, part of him wants to and just yeah. absolutely let everyone know how he feel. Because you, when you see most guys get traded from a good team, they usually don't get traded to like one of the worst teams. It's usually a team that's maybe on a come up, a team that's building something, yeah. a team that actually has a role for them to be a part of going forward. He got traded. He, I mean, you talk about he went from classy to ashy with this move. I mean, that team is, and you know, I love Chauncey. That's my dog. That is my dude. But that team is trash, man. It's trash. I'm sorry. And Malcolm is part of that trash team. And he has every reason to be salty. He has every reason to be salty. You think of trash. Think of Akeem. <laughs> Coming to him. Okay. God, Shrod. So he, he Akeem now? <laughs> Oh Edge McKay, our, our list is on that reference, Gary, because they don't, coming I don't think a, they all know that. Coming, coming Eddie Murphy and coming to America. Yeah. When you think of trash, think of Akeem. When you think <laughs> of trash, think of Malcolm Brockton. Um, damn, Shirai, you called to do trash. Anyway, I said the team was, not him. He's was. a good player. His team is. There's anyway. a difference. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> you call him, you say he's on a trash team. Yes. Yeah. The team is so trash. yeah, yeah. I it was just awkward. But <laughs> We have Grant coming in for the first time. I do think it'll give him a little nice little video. Um, he's playing nice because he was. You're mis- excited about Grant coming, aren't you, Gary? I think he deserves his flowers. I like him as a kid. Yes. Like, I'm not saying he was right for the Celtics or they shouldn't have moved. I'm not saying that. I just think he's one of the good guys of the league. He talks a lot. So what? I get tired of. We talk, we rip these young kids because they don't talk and they only talk in their language. This kid talks to everybody and everybody wants to hang them out dry because and, and rip them because he's talkative. And he he likes to talk and he's expressive and he's kind and, and I just talk. I mean, what do y'all want? Like it's just, you know, stop that. There's a lot of dudes out here in the league doing bad things. Grant ain't one of them. Grant's a good guy. So I do think he deserves his flower, get a little tribute video. He's playing on a bad team, but he's sounding like he's part of the future of it. And we'll see what happens with the coaching situation there. But yeah, I'm I want Grant to get his appreciation because he didn't, he's not going to get it going back to Dallas. <laughs> and and you know, I just think people should show him, you know, saving him in game seven against Milwaukee and standing up to Jimmy Butler and oh, don't poke the bear. No, he should have poked the bear. He was the only one who had some real heart in that in that series. So um to me yeah i'm 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 glad to see his his good appreciation on friday night team grant in a building gary washburn captain of team hey. Grant. <laughs> okay 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 right. welcome back all right finally final segment for this episode main celtics we mentioned them a little bit earlier they are in the g league finals they won their first game against the okc team on the, earlier this week Game two is Thursday in OKC. If there happens to be a game three, then they'd be back in Maine on Monday. So let's play some pick and roll really quickly. J.D. Davidson, 23 points, 12 assists. Drew Peterson, 20 points, 11 rebounds, and five assists. Nemius Keita, 20 points, 13 rebounds, and three blocks. It won't happen this year, but who do you think will crack the Celtics rotation from those three? Who you got, Gary? A lot. I think um, the only reason I won't say Kata is because I just think everybody's going to be back next year. I don't know what they'll do with Cornette, but I think they really like Cornette. So he'll be like the fourth center, but he'll get a shot. Davidson, I'm still intrigued by. I know that, you know, it's been two years. They gotta, they've got to bring him back on an NBA deal um, next year. There's no more two ways for him in Boston. He'd have to go somewhere else to get a two way. So I think it's put up or shut up with, for J.D. Davidson, whether it's, I think, obviously, he's he's done everything they've asked him to do. What are they going to do with him? Are they going to bring him back on a, you know, a, a, one of those, you know, 
four year, $10 million deals, or two year guarantee, you know, with, that you sign the second round picks, the one they like to sign to Jordan Walsh. Um, they got to figure it out. But I, I'm intrigued by JD Davidson. You know, um, it, you know, I, I think he's done, he made progress in the, in, in the two years. I'd give him a shot. Remember, they just learned. Man, not a hard lesson, but a lesson about just giving away a guy like Delano Banton, because that dude looks like a completely different player than he was in Boston. And I know he wasn't going to play a whole lot, but you don't like to give guys away like that. Who in Portland's like, oh, damn, okay. Now, when they're completely healthy next to it with, with Anthony Simons and Shaden Sharp and Jeremy Grant and all those guys, how much will he play? We don't know. Will he get into the rotation? Will he be an eighth or seventh man? Maybe. I don't see him starting, you know, and Scoot Henderson and those guys. But he's proven to be better than anybody thought. And I just think you don't want to have that happen with Davidson where you let him go somewhere else and find himself. So you give Davidson all the shot. Drew Peterson I don't know a lot about. Um, you know, I think he's a guy who's a shooter. You don't want to give away shooters either. But I say Davidson. This is tough. This is this was a real tough one for me because with Davidson, you you the, the the thing that's out there is is Drew Holiday and that 37 million player option that he can pick up for next year. And just you know how that plays out, I think will impact in some degree what you do with Davidson. Uh Peterson, I've I've watched maybe five or six of the main Celtics games this year, and he he ain't bad. I mean, he can shoot it, obviously, but he he can rebound. He's a little bit more physical than I thought I would see from him. So I'm leaning more towards Peterson than than just because I think there's a clearer path for him to get on the floor. Yeah. Sam Hauser has a team option next year for like $2 million. Celtics going to pick that up. There's no doubt about it. But Sam is probably going to be in the market to make way more money than that on his next deal, I think I think yeah. it's fair to say that. And the Celtics, by having Peterson around, you've got a guy that you can basically plug and play into a hole that already exists and a role that he already has an understanding of what's going to be expected of him, knowing that he would be potentially replacing a guy who found his niche with that group. Because Tatum and Brown, they ain't going nowhere. They ain't going nowhere. you got to figure out who are the pieces that we can fill in behind them. And... Peterson, I think Peterson's going to get a shot to play a little bit next year, but the following year, I think he's going to be someone that will be in their rotation. Um, and I can't say two years now, two years from now, I feel Davidson is going to be in a rotation. Kate is going to be in a rotation. I think they'll compete, but I think Peterson has a legitimate shot because he has a skill that the Celtics are going to need because I do think they're going to lose Sam after next season. So. Okay. Well, 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 well. It looks like that's all the time we have for today. <laughs> it, it's a shame that neither one of us picked Kata, and Kata the only one that got a real deal. Yeah. That's the funniest part. He's the funny. one that got the deal. Yeah. But you know what? I watched their game one against Oklahoma City in, in, the, in the finals, and I see why Kata does what he does when he gets in the NBA. He's trying to swat everything that goes up in the air. In the yeah. G League, you can do that because mm -hmm. there's no number of guards. Nobody's shooting but, but like little six, four, six, five guards. So <laughs> every shot they go up, you got a chance to swat it. But in the NBA, you got cats with six, nine who, who are shooting shots and, and guys that got up up and under and head fakes and all that. Kata, I still think it's going to take him a minute uh, to kind of position himself. And Let's not forget about Al. Al's going to be going into the last year of his deal next year, $9.5 million. Is he going to look to play beyond that? And if so, will he be looking for a reduced role? Will he become like, you know, their uh, – what's my man down in Miami? Gary's Haslam? guy who never played. Haslam? Yeah, will Haslam? he become their Haslam? Where, yeah. you know, he just, you know, nice suits and, you know, into the bench. Good morale. Go. go. <laughs> I don't know. Awesome. But – I, I I can't see Kata cracking this the rotation in the next year or two. I can't. He may compete. He'll compete for it, but he won't crack it. Uh, and, and Gary's boy Luke. I don't I don't know what they're gonna do with Luke because um, X is coming. Yeah. X is coming X for the minutes. So I don't know. Remember though, Drew Peterson will be twenty five next year. So 
Um, you know, he might be who he is. I, he's shooting 37% from three in the, in the G League. Mm -hmm. And J.D. Davidson has still got to – he's got to improve 26.6% uh, from the three. So he's got to improve that shot in order to, to, to make – and be a productive player, 68% from the line. So he's got to improve that shooting, but 8.6 assists, uh, 5.4 rebounds. So he's putting in the work. I just hope he gets a look. But as I said, there's no there's no pure answer because everybody is going to have issues next year <laughs> making this team. Mm. Yeah, there's going to be some good players that that going to be, you know, they don't have to update their LinkedIn. Yeah. Good players gonna have to update their LinkedIn because they ain't going. It will not be Boston Celtics currently playing for Boston Celtics. Right. Oh my gosh! On that note, we appreciate y'all listening to the Big Three NBA podcast. Subscribe, download, share with a friend. Three more games left in the regular season, which means we're ramping up for the most important games. We want to stick with us for all that insight. For Sean Blakely, Gary Washburn, I'm Kwani Lunas, the Big 3 NBA Podcast. We appreciate you listening. And again, come back next week.